Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. It's fall here, which means our summer crops have come and gone, and some of the garden beds are now empty, and they're not growing anything. But just because they're empty doesn't mean you can't build the soil fertility over the winter. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use free and local resources to do just that. Mulching garden beds is a great practice to help build your soil fertility. Probably the best thing to mulch with is finished compost. The nutrients are immediately available for the nutrient cycle, and it usually comes with a high concentration of beneficial bacteria and organisms like earthworms that will help break down other mulch materials. Generally, I simply lay the finished compost on top in a 2 to 3 centimeter or 1 inch layer, making sure to have already pulled back any undecomposed mulch materials. I do not mix it in so that I don't damage any of the beneficial organisms like fungi that are in the soil. Autumn leaves are a great resource that quite literally fall from the sky. They have a wide variety of trace elements and carbon. In fact, of the 15 commonly tested for beneficial and essential elements, autumn leaves have 11 of 15. When broken down, they add these nutrients to the nutrient cycle and the carbon material adds humus that retains water and provides habitat for soil-borne bacterial organisms. I usually add a thick layer to the garden, as it will help insulate the soil from the harshest winter temperatures. By spring, the volume will have decreased and decomposed. The one thing that autumn leaves don't have a lot of is nitrogen. For this, we're going to turn to a resource you generate in your kitchen. Used coffee grounds and tea leaves are often tossed in the trash, but they are a valuable resource to add to the garden. When I analyzed coffee grounds in the Testing Garden Assumptions series videos, they had a total NPK of 2.05, 0 0.2979, and 0 0.7469 with a handful of other trace elements. Used tea leaves also had an impressive total NPK of 4.15, 0 0.62, and 0 0.4, doubling the nitrogen and phosphorus of used coffee grounds. Tea leaves also have 12 of the 15 elements that we're looking for and are a valuable addition to any mulch layer. I usually sprinkle them directly on top of the autumn leaves, making sure not to apply more than a centimeter or two in any one area. If over applied, you can slow decomposition processes. I commonly add eggshells to my mulch layer as well. They're comprised of over 40% calcium that is immediately available to your plants upon release from the shell. Eggshells also have a wide variety of elements, including nitrogen. They have 9 of 15 essential tested for elements, and most importantly, they contain significant quantities of selenium, which is often not found in other free and local resources. Eggshells are easy to add to the mulch layer. I usually let them dry out in my shed for a few months. This will help reduce any potential of bacterial colonization. Once dry and brittle, I crush the shells and roughly sprinkle them on top of my mulch layer. Not only can you take materials that would otherwise become trash, you could literally grow your own fertilizer at home. Comfrey is a plant that sends down a deep taproot and is able to collect nutrients from the mineral layer and bring them to the surface as part of their leaves. I use the leaves as part of the mulch layer, helping to deposit these nutrients where the garden plants can have access to them. Comfrey has a total NPK of 3.7, 1.2, and 8.43, and it contains all 15 of 15 commonly tested for essential and beneficial elements. In order to keep things in place and start the decomposition process, when I'm done, I'll make sure to give the mulch layer a quick water. When you're applying mulch near a live plant, such as a perennial, make sure not to apply an overly thick layer. All of these materials, when combined in larger quantities, can form a hot compost. A hot compost near a root system can cause significant damage. When combined and used in a mulch layer or in the creation of compost, these free and local resources often have more than enough nutrients to allow you to grow healthy organic vegetables year after year. If combined with other free and local methods, such as cover crops, wood ash, and human urine, I am confident anyone can go product free in their garden while producing vast amounts of healthy organic crops. If you would like additional information on the free and local resources we've just spoken about, make sure to check out the Testing Garden Assumption series, where I put practices, products, and methods to the test to see if they are supported by science. The videos are published on the first Friday of every month. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.